Sunday on Close Up, Republican candidate for governor Kevin Smith is on the show. We'll talk about his campaign and the current field of candidates. Also, the sharp divide between Planned Parenthood and a number of measures taken up in Concord and in Washington. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Josh McKelvin. So far in the race for governor, only four major declared candidates, two Democrats, two Republicans. So with a short field, it's really anyone's race to win. Former head of Cornerstone Action and conservative activist Kevin Smith certainly hopes that's him. He's been official for a while now, and he joined us on the program. Good to see you. Josh, thanks for having me back on. How are things going? Things are going great. You know, I've been traveling all around the state and talking and listening to the voters out there and visiting businesses every week. In fact, this week I was up in Berlin. We toured the paper mill. We went to Androscoggin Hospital, did some Main Street visits as well. Last week I was over in Milford. We went over to Sertronics. They make circuit boards and ship them worldwide. Now, i, I got to tell you, some people talk of the New Hampshire advantage. I'll tell you what the New Hampshire advantage is. It's our people. They're industrious, they're hardworking, and they just have a get-it-done attitude. And frankly, they want to see more of that out of their elected officials, their elected leaders. Just want us to get it done. You know, grow jobs, grow the economy. Yeah. And that's the kind of plan I've been putting out there, Josh. Yeah, when you were touring the state, you must have had one eye on Concord last week as well. Obviously, the vote for the uh, repeal of gay marriage, sure. same-sex marriage came up, something that you were... A uh, strong uh, advocate for and uh, an opponent of the law before when you were with the uh, Cornerstone Action. Yeah. First of all, your reaction to what happened, and do you think this is a dead issue? I mean, it was a resounding no from a Republican majority. Yeah, it, it certainly seems like we've seen some finality on this issue. And frankly, Josh, I think the voters have grown weary of the issue. I think they want it to, to, to be over, you know. And I know some folks were advocating for a referendum because they wanted to give the people the last say on it. Uh, but frankly, at this point, you know, and especially when I'm talking to people out there, they're asking the question, how am I going to put food on the table? You know, how am I going to fill my tank of gas? Am I going to have a, a job tomorrow? And those are really the issues I think they want to see the legislature talking about, and they want the next governor to concentrate on. And so, you know, my feelings on the issue haven't changed, and uh, I, I still support the traditional definition of marriage, and maybe that's unpopular in some circles, uh, but it's my sincere belief uh, but, but when I'm running for governor, and certainly as governor, my agenda has been very clear, and that's on jobs and the economy. And, and you make no bones about that. You've been saying that a lot recently. That seems like a hard right turn for a lot of people, given the fact that it's cornerstone action. Social issues were, well, you know, the, that was what you're championing. Josh, I would say, you know, when I was at Cornerstone, the whole reason why it became widely successful while, while I was there is because I broadened its scope, you know, and I mainstreamed the message. And in fact, we talked about not only the social, but the fiscal issues as well. And frankly, I can't wait for, for Maggie Hassan or Jackie Silly to bring up my time at Cornerstone there because I went into that position, Josh, to fight against the policies that, as Governor Sununu said at the time, were ruining the state of New Hampshire. The LLC tax, the tax on campgrounds, the tax on lottery winnings, you know, the, the rooms and meals tax increase. Maggie Hassan proposed a plan to have a state government takeover of health care. Those were all the policies that I fought against very successfully, tooth and nail. And I will make, uh, you know, I will take no time reminding the public, or, or will take time reminding the public about all of those failed policies and what I was out there fighting against. You've also become the first candidate to release uh, your economic, your business plan, basically. Uh, can't get into the finer points so, yeah. here in the program and give us some of the broad strokes. Sure. Well, Josh, I am the only candidate that has released a specific plan on how we're going to grow jobs and grow the economy in the state. It's called New Hampshire's Future is Now. You can go on my website and check it out. Uh, but we rolled out the first part of it this week, and it deals with two parts. One is we have one of the highest corporate tax rates in the entire country. And we've got to lower that corporate tax rate in order to lure businesses here and get businesses to grow here. So I've proposed cutting the business profits tax cutting the business enterprise tax and exempting some businesses from even having to pay that business enterprise tax, which is a tax on payroll. And then the other part of that plan deals with streamlining state government, making it more efficient, uh, investing in technology so we can do our jobs better, uh, and implementing a system of metrics across all departments. It's something I did when I was an administrator at the Juvenile Justice Department. We ought to be measuring the efficacy of the programs we're funding. You know, these are taxpayer dollars. We've got to know if they're working well or not. You know, and it always sounds good when we talk about lowering corporate taxes and lowering the business yeah. tax rate and streamlining government and, and getting uh, you know, more technologically savvy. But at the end of the day, we still got to pay for all this and pay our bills. Well, so. you do. And, and that's why, Josh, I released these two parts together. Because the fact of the matter is that you can find a lot of cost savings. You know, one of the things that's in that plan is implementing a lot of the recommendations of the Efficiency Committee that was done back in 2003. They found that in the first year, if you implemented nearly 80% of the, the things that were in that plan, you could save $74 million in just one year. Over the course of five years, $420 million. 
So when I talk about lowering that corporate tax rate, you know, the other thing too is that it's going to expand the economic base of the, of the businesses that are paying those taxes. It's exactly what Mayor Giuliani did when, in New York City. He cut the corporate tax rate in New York City. Businesses flocked to there. Revenues actually went up, even though the rate went down, because more businesses were willing to move in. That's what would happen right here in the state of New Hampshire. I continue to say, I will be Deval Patrick's worst nightmare as governor of New Hampshire because I will take jobs out of Massachusetts and move them to New Hampshire because we will be a more economically competitive state than Massachusetts will be. Let me talk to you about the campaign a, a little bit now. First of all, I mean, we're, June's right around the corner of the filing deadline. Here it is, basically you and an over Lamont, and you got to be looking around thinking, really, this is it? Well, look, I mean, I think we're... Well, I think I'm a very strong candidate. I think Ovid's a good candidate. I'm surprised the field is as small as it is, though. Is that a little surprise, Josh. It is an open seat. But look, there's two on the Democratic side. There's two on the Republican side. And I think the contrasts are going to be very clear, both in the primary and in the general election. You know, I know Ovid said last week that I haven't held major office. And in all due respect... Experience that, was a big thing. What yeah, you well, let, let's talk about experience. You know, because I, I would say to Ovid, you know, running for office four times isn't in and of itself a, a qualification for being governor. The fact of the matter is that I have held office. I've served in the legislature. I've served in the executive branch. In fact, many of the uh, appointments that I helped make to various executive boards and commissions are folks who are still serving today under Governor Lynch. And I've been an administrator in state government. I've helped fight to get good reforms in state government and streamline a lot of the processes there. I've seen the good, bad, and ugly of state government. I know how it works. And then finally, I, I have fought for good policy on the outside as well. As I mentioned earlier, I was out there fighting against all of the, you know, Maggie and Jackie, they want to take us backwards. I mean, just look at all the taxes that they proposed. They were hurting and killing small businesses in this state. We can't go backwards in this state. We've got to go forward, put out a long-range vision and a specific plan for how we are going to be the most economically competitive state. We need a leader in this state, and I'm the one to do it, Josh. Philosophically speaking, what are the biggest differences that you see between you and, and Ovid Lamonte? You know, you guys will have plenty of time to show your differences. Yeah. But right well, you now. know, as I've said, you know, philosophically, you, you may not see a whole lot of daylight in the sense that we both believe in the principles of limited government, and less spending, low taxes, personal responsibility. But that's where Ovid stops and I start. I've been putting a lot of substance out there and talking about how we're going to grow jobs, how we're going to end certain kinds of business regulations and being specific about what those regulations are, how we're going to lower electric rates. No one's talking about electric rates right now in this state. We pay some of the highest electric rates in the entire country. So we need a long-term energy policy on how we're going to bring down those electric rates. And if you go on my website, you'll see my specific proposals and my plan. If you go on Ovid's site, I'm not even sure there's an issues page right now on his website. So I think there's big contrast between what we're offering in substance and our experience. I feel I have the most experience in getting good stuff done in state government than any candidate in this race, be it Democrat, or Republican. This week the legislature is expected to uh, vote on another gambling bill. It's a little bit different. There seems to be some more support, bipartisan support for this particular one. Yeah. You've been on record as being opposed to expanding gambling. Last week over the Montaigne left the door open a little bit. Is that something you're willing to look at if you become governor? Josh, I'm willing to look at a very limited plan. But to me, it's, it's got to address three main concerns that I've always had. One is proliferation. Now, we can't have casinos all around this state. And I know the current proposal calls for four. I think that's too many. I'm thinking more on the lines of one, maybe two. The second issue is that you can't tie the revenue to the state budget because all it's going to do is grow spending and grow programs in the state. And to the credit of this current legislature, they've tied the revenue to offsetting business taxes, which I think is very smart. We've got to either offset business taxes or offset property taxes, but not include it in the state budget. And the last part is we need a strong regulatory infrastructure uh, in place before any casinos are built. So you put those three things in a particular bill, and uh, I would consider it viable and, and would take a serious uh, look at it. A couple of minutes to go. Why Kevin Smith? Why, why Kevin Smith rather than anybody else in this field to replace John Lynch under the Golden Dome after eight years of his, his uh, sure. administration? Josh, we need a leader. We need a leader in this state who is decisive, who has a long-term vision for this state, and who has a specific plan for how we're going to be the most economically competitive state in the country. You know, we, too many of our young people are leaving New Hampshire right now. What are we doing to keep our young people here? You know, we have the greatest schools in the country in New Hampshire between Dartmouth College, uh, UNH School and Business School, Whittemore Business School, St. Anselm College, Keene State, Plymouth State. Great schools, but our kids are leaving uh, after they graduate from there. You know why? The jobs aren't here. The good, long-term, sustainable jobs aren't here. That is my primary goal, is to make sure New Hampshire leads the way 
leads the country in attracting and keeping these uh, uh, long-term, high-paying, sustainable jobs. And I have the plan to do that. Again, I'm the only one with a long-term economic plan for how we're going to address job growth, economic development, health care costs, energy costs, and modernizing state government. I'm passionate about doing it. And uh, I think the more folks get to, to know me, the more they'll see that I'm the guy for the job. Well, it's just now heating up. Best of luck to you moving forward. Josh, thank you very Welcome much. Welcome back anytime. Thank you.